Hi there, Chris here with a little bit of a review for you all. In this video, we are going to look at Games and Gears Ichiban Studio Proline Brushes. And this is for their Kickstarter that's currently ongoing. And as you can see, these are a brand new set of brushes that they are producing from Games and Gear. These are a aluminum body, sable hair bristles. They have four sizes. Two, one, zero, and double zero. And as you can see, they the back end disassembles so that you can conceal the hairs and protect them essentially as you can carry these pretty much in your pockets and what have you. Really uh, an interesting idea. They are a plastic bushing on the inside to keep the brush in place when you have it in sort of a brush mode. You're going to see you just disassemble it, turn it around, and slap it back into its handle. The thickness of the brush is very similar to a pen or pencil. It is a little bit thicker than your standard brush. As you can see here, we have a little assortment of paint brushes. This is not a complete uh, assortment of brushes, but a fairly common grouping. The Army Painter brushes are uh, triangular, kind of natured. The Citadel ones, a lot of people are very familiar with, and the Series 7 uh, from Windsor Newton are fairly familiar to a lot of people as well. And as you can see, like the brush handle is uh, fairly thick, but for some of us with bigger hands, it does fit more comfortably within your hand as you know it is a larger shaft to hang on to versus the more traditional size brushes. The Army Painter brushes being a much broader shape, as you can see here. You can see, and again, they tried to design for comfort, and so like these Ichiban brushes are designed for the painter's comfort. As you can see here, we're just comparing bristle lengths. You can see the bristles are fairly comparable to pretty much everybody else's. The bristles are sable here, and these are the sable army painter brushes, and you can see they're about the same length, and we're looking at the double zero. This is the smallest brush offered right currently. And that was the detail brush. And here is the detail brush from Citadel. You can see the bristles are a little bit longer. And it does come to a really fine point. It's about the same thickness. And so really this double zero brush really is comparable to a detail brush from Citadel. The fine detail brush is a little bit smaller than this. So if you're looking for a really tiny brush, you're not going to be finding it here. And as you can see here, we, again, we've got the double zero and the detail brush. And then here it is compared up to a Windsor Newton. You can see the Windsor Newton is a far shorter hair. And this is the zero. And Windsor Newtons go down to triple zero in size comparison. And really, again, you know, the, the brush handle is quite thick versus these other ones. The brush itself is about three times heavier, it's about nine grams, versus the standard paintbrush like the Citadel or the Windsor Newton. Those uh, weigh in at about three grams. Here we can see just a, an assortment of base brushes. This is the uh, Ichiban Brush 1, which is pretty comparable to a base coating brush, or a standard brush, or Army Painter's Regiment brush, which I assume is meant to be a base coating brush. But you can see they're all fairly pretty much the same even the special edition heavy metal standard brush, you know, it's got fairly long hairs. But even base coating brushes, even from a big company like Citadel, you can see how they're very even different in their manufacturing process. You can see the one at the bottom here, the hairs are cropped at the end versus the other one where it's it comes to a, a finer point. And, you know, it's these are mass-produced brushes, and so even their processing is not 100% versus the Ichiban, which, you know, we're pretty consistent across its bristles, which is a good thing. Here we're going to just take a quick look at the number one brush and see how it handles. So I'm just going to slap a little bit of paint down. Now this is a very thin body paint I'm using here, very comparable. This is the Minotaur paint. It's really for, designed for the airbrush, but you can use it on your main brushes as well. See, it's got a nice little draw. Now with the shorter bristles, you can see here as I draw the brush and turn it 180, you can see you can create chiseling and you can see how the end is quite flat on these brushes, which you can use to your advantage when laying out base colors. Now you can see here as I'm drawing color and going back to the palette, with the shorter bristles, you do end up having to draw more paint in as really they're not going to hang on to too much paint. And 
versus a longer bristle brush, which will hang onto a little bit more paint. But again, with the Windsor Newton, it's a very short brush and it hangs onto very little paint. And so you can achieve far greater detail with a shorter bristle and maintain more control versus a longer one, which ends up holding onto more paint, but you end up covering more area. It's just the nature of these brushes and the bristle lengths. As you can see, it covers fairly well, works fairly evenly around the surfaces. Again, because of the shorter bristle length, you can get into the nice little nooks and crannies of a model fairly easily, fairly precise, does maintain a nice point even as we work it around the model surface and what have you. And that's just a quick little look at that aspect of it. You see when you rinse them off, they clean off very well. Again, it's sable and sable brushes are of a, typically a better quality. Here I'm just quickly looking at a base coating brush from Citadel. And again, just to give you a slightly bit of a comparison here, you can see even with this brush, you can draw it out to a chisel becomes a lot broader versus the number one, which was about the same size of brush. And again, you can draw it to a nice point. And again, just working back to my example of a longer bristled brush, you can get a longer brush stroke off of it. It's really just personal preference at this point, really, you know, when you're working on models, but really the defining quality is the fact that it is a sable hair. It's a natural hair versus synthetic, but I think everybody's kind of familiar with my opinions on synthetic hairs. <clears throat> and so really quickly, we're just kind of finishing off here what we're doing here. And again, it's, you know, it, they are very comparable to each other. They're both similar size. They wash off very well. And so here we're coming back into the number one again. And then really quickly here, we're just going to quickly do a little bit of blending. Now, one thing I did find with these brushes versus like the Citadel was that because the of the uh, amount of sable hair in it, that it was very soft. The contact is very light, which is nice. Versus Citadel, Citadel, you often feel quite a bit of the uh, surface as you work the brush across. And again, that's really a personal preference type matter because some might want a smoother touch versus a little bit more firmer so you know where you where you are going on a model you can see we're just quickly kind of just feathering out this color just creating a bit of a transition we'll get to another little feathering demo in a moment you can see it draws very well nice smooth transition between colors Often with a firmer brush, you can get into some funny aspects versus a softer brush. Here we're going to use the double zero, which is the smallest brush in this brush line. We're just grabbing some lighter color, kind of illustrate some highlighting. And here I'm just going to quickly illustrate some layered highlighting. You see it draws to a nice point as you work it around. And again, when you turn it 180, it does create that little chiseling as well. And it comes to a flat little point at the end which is a nice feature if you need to chisel the end of your bristles. And then really quickly here, we're just illustrating a highlighting, a layered highlight. Not really necessary here. It's just more kind of goofing off at this point. You see, we're just simply drawing a color in. And when you're creating these small highlights along the fabric, what have you, detail in the model. Again, the shorter bristle length isn't a huge concern you are able to cover that entire length of that little highlight. You can see the softer bristles, uh, the more pressure you do apply, the more paint does come out of the bristles and onto the model. And so really that's, that's just a quick little example on applying a layered highlight on a model using these brushes. Next, we're going to take a look at just a quick little blend as, again as well. Again, we're using the double zero. We're just going to quickly layer the highlight on here. We're just going to quickly just draw this. And then I'm going to quickly grab a number one that's damp, a little bit damp, and just basically feather the edge out. We're just going to two brush blend this really fast. And you can see, again, because it's, it's really soft sable hairs, it does feather out the 
the edges of the paint very nicely. Quite a bit of control. Hairs aren't all over the place. So we're just going to grab a little bit more paint. And then we'll blend a little bit more and just try it out some more. And again, I haven't had too much opportunity to work with these brushes yet. But so far, I have enjoyed their performance. So far, they do perform fairly well. Again, you can see we're just simply feathering out the edges. Maintains a lot of control, maintains a point. Fairly easily. And so really quick, again, like this is just a quick example of, you know, using colors and applying them to the model. It's really not a review on painting purple here. <laughs> We're using a double zero this time. We're going to play out a little bit of line. We're just going to add a little bit of a line to the hem of this cloak here. I'm going to just test out the double zero and drawing lines. And as you can see, you can draw a fairly thin line. Kind of got a little thick on the end there, but that's my fault as I'm not maintaining the proper angle there. Again, too, you can see that a bit of a, the model surface is a little bit rough. As we're just simply illustrating here, the point of the brush. As you can see, simply just draw a straight little line. Again, shorter bristle length does help in these kind of situations when you do want to be precise. And that is one advantage of a shorter bristle brush, similar to the Winsor Newtons as well. If you want precise placement of your pigments on a model. And so that's the lines. And so far, so good. I mean, again, I haven't had too much time to play with them. Now, one thing, when you are rinsing off your brush, the tendency is to kind of grab, you know, near the, the end of the brush and shake your paintbrush off. And I do kind of concern that because they do separate and there is no locking mechanism that I am kind of fearful of the brush kind of falling into my little paint pot of water. But it holds in there just fine. And I'm fairly rough on my brushes. And as you can see there, often the tendency is to grab it right by where the first black ring is, uh, where the furrow and the handle are attached. How do these brushes clean up? Well... Again, I'm fairly rough on my brushes. Grab a healthy dollop of water, grab some of my favorite brush soap, and just quickly lather it up. And as you can see here, no hairs have fallen out or anything like that. Be fairly rough with it. Again, because of the soft bristles, it, it does manage fairly well under pressure. And as you can see, when you rinse it off, nice and clean, maintains a point. And so that's our quick little look at Games and Gears Ichiban Studios Pro Line Paint Brush Series. As you can see there, there's a little vent hole for when you paint the, put the brush away. It's very advantageous as it allows moisture to escape. But that's it. For more information, click the link below for the Kickstarter that's currently ongoing.